Here we are at Darkly Labs, and today I'm going to show you how you can upgrade your Emblazer 2 or Emblazer Core laser machine so that you can take advantage of the brand new 10 watt laser unit. Let's go! Darkly Labs has just released a 10 watt laser upgrade for their Emblazer 2 and Emblazer Core laser cutters. And if you're like me, you're eager to get that unit into your machine and see what it can do. I don't know about you, but I can't wait. So how about we dive in and I'll show you step by step what you need to do so that you can change out your old laser unit and take advantage of 10 watts of laser power. But before that, oh man, I'm a stinker. Do me a favor, if you enjoy the laser livestream channel and these types of tutorials, hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the other tutorials and projects all based around lasers. But, I don't know about you, I'm eager. Let's get that laser into the Emblazer 2. All the tools you need to install your 10 watt laser unit into your Emblazer 2 or Emblazer Core machine are provided in the kit. You will get a security hex tool as well as a Philips P1 tool. Three different hex tools that you'll need to unbolt the original unit and place the upgrade, as well as a large bolt, four smaller bolts, and the upgraded plate that will fit directly into the laser unit. Just for ease so that everyone can see what I'm going to do, I've actually removed the lid. And if you have to do this to change the lid on your Emblazer 2, don't worry. Here's a link to a video where I walk through each step, showing you how to remove the lid step by step. The first thing that I'm going to do with my Emblazer 2 is just to make sure that the laser unit here is homed and that it's actually as high as possible. You're gonna see in a few steps why that's important. So the next thing that I'm gonna do just so that everyone can have a clear view of how to go through this process. I'm gonna remove the cutting tray and we'll put it aside. So at this point with the power disconnected, you should be able to move the laser grand tree without a problem. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take off the silicon nozzle and put it aside. The next step that I need to do is actually behind with the laser housing. So to make it a little easier, I'm just gonna turn this around so everyone can see what's going on. And I'm just gonna pull this forward so you can see what's going on in the laser housing. To get access to the laser is to actually remove these two screws. One happens to be just underneath here and the top one is accessed through this channel. Now just beware because there is a channel here as well, but that's actually to a limit switch that helps your machine know how to home itself. So you don't wanna put anything in there. What you wanna do is you wanna take your screwdriver and you wanna go in and undo the screw. It might be a little bit tight. And I like to just support the laser when I'm doing this, because you don't wanna bend any of the rails here. We'll just pull that first screw out. It looks like it's almost out which it is, that's the first one done. Let's move that air assist out, again support it from behind, and unscrew that piece. The screw comes out, it's a little bit tight to begin with. But you'll definitely have access to it. And that's the second screw, it just fell into the machine. Once those two screws are out, you're able to actually open up the back housing and slide it down. The next thing that we need to do is actually remove both these connectors. So we don't need a tool, I'm just gonna use my fingers. The top one's really easy, you just grab it and give it a wiggle and it comes free. That's actually for the top fan. There happens to be a little latch on the side here so all you need to do is just push that down and then give it a bit of a pull. And once we've got those two disconnected, you want to step closer. We need to now turn the laser around 
So I'm going to do so just so you can see. You don't need to do this at home, but we're going to move the laser head back and we're going to take the torque security tool. We're actually going to come and bring it up in here. And I'm going to show you from another angle what I'm actually doing. So if I actually turn this around, we need to put the tool up in here and release it. So there it is. And again, I'm just going to hold on to this so it doesn't slide around. The screw. So that's the screw that you want to take out. And now we should be able to wiggle and release the five watt laser that came standard with the Emblazer 2. Our next step is to actually remove this plate in here. We're going to use the smallest 1.3 Allen key. Now these screws are incredibly delicate. What we don't want to do is get them to strip any of the connections. Put, them in, put it in and turn it counterclockwise. So I'm going to turn it that way away from me and just they come out very very easily there's not a lot of force on those it's probably the most delicate part of this operation that's the first one put that aside and we need to do that for the other two the second one I'm going to also take the laser unit screw I left in there, and the last one. And that's the third one out. At this point, we need to remove this plate, which is what held on the laser unit. Now, if you happen to have an Emblazer 2 from around about 2018 or earlier, contact Darkly Labs and they will show you how to remove this plate without damaging the belt. And you can do so by emailing them at the link in the description. But right now, we're gonna take this plate off so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab it, hold on, and I'm going to pull it forward until it gives. And you can see here that there's a little channel where the belt fits in. Now that we've got the plate off, we need to loosen up and take out this pulley just so that the next step is a little easier. I need to grab the 2.5 hex key, place it in here, and just loosen it up and you'll see that it'll come out very easily in a second. It does take a little bit of loosening from the housing. And you can see here, the whole piece comes straight out. We're now gonna take the new metal bracket and the plastic piece, they're actually glued together. So that makes things a little easier. We're now going to slot this belt onto the teeth here. So I've taken the belt off and you can see there's some teeth just in here. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this belt and we're gonna make sure that the teeth, teeth match. So we just put the teeth in that way. And it kind of feels a little weird, but when you turn it around, you can see that it fits perfectly. Now we're going to align this mounting plate onto the laser unit. The important part are these three countersunk holes. And in your kit, you'll have four screws, one spare that Darkly Labs has supplied because these screws are very, very delicate. So I have one of the screws and the 1.3 hex key here. How I'm going to do this, and this is an easy way, is I'm actually gonna take the screw and place it into one of the holes here. And then I'm going to align it with the plate that's just over here and you can do this in any configuration you can pull it up high which is what i'm going to do i'm just going to see if i can place it in there and at that point it looks like it's aligned i'm just going to grab the key put a little bit of pressure on it i'm just pushing it all the way up to the top Let's see if i can get that first one in and yep it's definitely taking you don't have to over tighten it or anything but you can see now that plate is holding on. So I'm going to grab the next screw, place it onto the hex tool, feed it in. That's actually a, a little bit of a kind of feeling where it is again. Hold that up, just tighten that up. And on the next one, I'll show you from the other angle exactly what I'm doing. 
So here I'm taking the screw, I'm going to place it into the hole. I have my very small hex tool and just thread it in. The minute I feel any pressure at the end, I'm not trying to tighten it or crush it, it is now attached sliding up and down that rail. Now that we have the plate and the belt attached, we need to get the belt attached to these pulleys. The first top one is toothed and the other pulley we pulled out earlier so we had access. So the easiest way to do that is to slide the plate up and place the belt around the toothed pulley, which will give us this loop at the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is grab the hex tool and place it into the bolt, ready to go. This is now being held up by the tooth gears, and I'm going to just bring the belt and put it into the channel and line it up. And we'll line it up with the hole in the housing and start threading it through. I'm just going to go to finger type. We have now modified the laser housing to accept the new 10 watt laser upgrade. Now's the fun part. We get to place the new 10 watt laser upgrade onto the mounting plate. And to do so, we're going to go and grab that large screw and place it right in the middle. And you'll just feel, you can see it just slid straight in. What I like to do, like the other screws, I like to take my 2.5 hex tool and place it in there. And all I'm going to do is move these cables to the side and align it with this top hole on the plate. You should be able to just feel your way. And the laser unit will actually slide and lock in to the plate. Unlike all the other screws, this one you do want to tighten up. You don't want to make sure there's no wiggle room on the laser because that's going to be moving right around the work area. You want to make sure that it's nice and tight and there's no give in it. That's it. It is not going to move. We're ready to go. Let's turn this emblazer 2 around and hook up the fan and the laser to the driver board. I'm just going to move the housing out. So all we're going to do now is connect up the laser unit and I'm going to just grab that little piece, making sure that the black resistor here doesn't even get damaged because we need that in place. Pop that on. Grab the fan. There's two little notches that face this way, so it's kind of easy to wiggle that on. And then all we need to do is put the housing back over this piece. Now these two cables, they need to be in this kind of area or quadrant. I'm going to show you a close-up of that in a second. But I also want to show you this little fan here on the board fits into this little notch here and that's kind of the key to, the, to this process. So let's just wiggle this up. You can see here that that fan is going in the, in the right place and those cables are sticking out like that. So once that's all done, you can see how tight it is. All we need to do now is just go back and grab the screws that we removed last time. And I have the two screws here. I'm using the, well, the Phillips head screwdriver. And again, if you remember, the first one goes into the channel at the top. Just feel your way. There's the first one going in, just like we did removing it, just the reverse. And the other one goes underneath the little channel here because, as we said, that's the, the limit switch that helps it home. 
and it once that's tightened, which it is now done, you now have an emblazer too. With the 10 watt laser unit installed, the very final thing you need to do is just take your silicon nozzle, press it up there, and you're ready to turn your machine on and run a test. Congratulations, you've just upgraded your Emblazer 2 or Emblazer Core with the 10 watt laser module. The next step is to actually run a focus calibration and also upgrade your library in Lightburn and we're going to go through that step by step in the very next video. Until then, hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up so you don't miss any more laser projects and tutorials. We'll see you real soon for the final step of this 10 watt laser module upgrade. See you real soon.